and welcome back to quick bits and in today's video we're gonna go over jq command which is very helpful uh, for processing any json input output um, all right let's go ahead and start it so let's say we have this file called data.txt that contains some json data in it uh, we can look at it like this um, so as you can see it's very hard to read right so one the easiest thing we can do is say cut data json and then pipe it to this new command called jq and here we go. Now we can see indented data with some coloring and stuff going on. Uh, the next thing we want to learn is, uh, is this uh, capture. Um, so when you do JQ and then you pass this, um, you know, in quotes, this dot. So let's assume that the dot is this object, you know, the object of interest. That's the something that you really, this is the most important part of the JQ command that like the, the first dot is that whole object. So when you do that, same thing, right? So now what we can do, we can say, since we assume that this dot is an object, we can just uh, work it the same way that work with a lot of different programming languages, right? So now we can reference records by just saying records, and let's say we can say zero, right? We want to zero index it, this record. All we do is say dot is the object, records, and zero index. Boom, we can see the first object, right? We can go further, we can say, that name to see the name robert right let's say you want to see children children and then let's let's say we want to mm, print the alice right what do we do exactly so we just say index one because the alice is an index one of the array boom alice right <clears throat> so the other thing you want to learn is uh, let's go back into the, our initial Right, this is the object again. We can do even more tricky manipulations. Um, so one thing you want to learn is this new, new way of doing it. So like, let's say you want to transfer this object uh, of array, right? This is object of uh, array of records, right? So what we can do, we can reference the records and we, we can stream those objects. Not just print the whole array, but stream the, each object of array. In order to do that, we can just say something like this. Uh, that reference the object records field and then just square bracket. What it does, it reshuffles our array, uh, sending them as a sequence of objects. And this is very important to know because you can do some magic with it, right? So now we can do things like this. Let's say our requirement is to <coughs> produce new um, JSON, right? That instead of a name has, let's say, <coughs> like a father, right? For example, let's say the, the, the field name should be named father here and here right and the children should be named the kids right but the data should be the same so like it will be father robert and then kids you know jen alex and alice and alex right so one way to do it is of course to like you know write some python script and everything but with gq it's still very simple to do to do the object transformations so one way to go about it is to reference our um, records field right and then say okay we want to uh, uh, stream the objects over there of the field and then we just want to pipe it to and then when we pipe it right so now we can do some crazy uh, very interesting transformations so first we want to say we want to do object right as an output and then we say hey we want to do father field be equal to name field right so we want to replace the name field so basically we want to create new object with the father field which is actually the name field of the object that we're talking here um, Okay, so then uh, we see we want to uh, rename uh, kids, right? So we want to make another field, kids, that refers to children. Uh, children, yeah. Okay, so that looks good. Let's see what happens. Boom. You see we have now we have a new sequence of objects, which is, you know, father is Robert, kids. You see we've made the really cool transformation with just few words, right? So you, so you don't have to write all the script. So now let me show you some powerful stuff that we can do with JQ as well. All right, let's say again we want to cut the data, um, say JQ. This is the object. So let's say we want to uh, pick only objects that match certain name, right? Let's say we want to pick only the objects that match name Robert, right? So the way we do it is we say um, JQ that um, records, and we again we want to uh, stream the objects, and then. We pipe it, and inside of our pipe, what we can say, we can use these functions. Select, right? Uh, we want to select the name, on a name. Um, 
that is equal to Robert. Um, that's it. That should work. Here we go. So now we picked the uh, only the object that matches our name, Robert, right? Uh, we can do even more powerful stuff like um, check for contains, right? So let's say we want to check for the names that contain Rob in them, right? Contains um, Rob, right? Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Oh, we can say we want to contain J, right? Now we got John. Um, so yeah, you can do a lot of cool stuff. You can refer reference the JQ documentation for more functions. Um, I hope you guys like this video. If you like more of this, please like and subscribe this. Uh, thank you. Bye.